many jobs in farming are dull, dirty, and sometimes dangerous. And there is a global shortage of workers to do those jobs. But could some Chinese robots offer a solution? Tens of thousands of farmers gather at the Cereals Live Agricultural Show in Lincolnshire in the UK to look at the latest developments in the sector. This is the type of farm machinery we're used to seeing. It's large, it's powerful, and it's designed with a human operator in mind. But what happens when we rethink that? Well, things start to get smaller and lighter. China's drone manufacturer, XAG, which has a large share of China's domestic drone market, is now looking to move into Europe. Its spraying drone and field robot are making their European debut at the show. What we're actually doing is removing the dull, dirty uh, jobs that people don't want to do. If you are spraying all day with a knapsack sprayer, you're exposed all the time to potentially harmful chemicals. This, with the, either the drone or the robot system, you are completely separated, so you are safer and you, you get to do the jobs that are more profitable and more uh, effective for you and let the machines do the dirty hard work. To hammer home this message, Rob Pearson sits in a deck chair in a trailer pulled by a field robot during his demonstration. But it's not just about saving time. There's pressure on the environment to reduce carbon, to reduce chemical usage, and nobody else has a solution for this. China is, and XAG in particular, are miles ahead of the competitors because they've been working with this technology since 2013, and we are introducing some of the great advances they've made. Guangzhou-based XAG has been working with Harper Adams University in Shropshire since 2018. The university specializes in bringing robotics to the agricultural sector. So this one is the only one in Europe at this point, is that right? All the way over from China, very specially for cereals here, and there is no other drone like it. It's designed for efficiency. Now it looks unusual, and it is unusual, isn't it? You've got the two rotors, which seems perhaps it wouldn't hold this weight. Yeah, completely different from the standard drone spraying technology that we've kind of been led to believe that is possible. Now the impossible has come into creation. We've got a dual rotor system designed for better efficiency of spraying. So very very similar to the V22 Boeing Osprey, we've got multiple rotors that literally then tilt, allowing the drone to fly forwards and backwards and then turn, and then the power is just literally from these giant rotors at the top. That then literally creates a non-turbulent airflow to push down the spray into the crop canopy, making it very much an altogether more efficient machine for crop spraying. Jonathan, tell us about these spinning spraying discs. They're fantastic in their capability to allow you to change from the amount of volume to the droplet size. So the faster the rotor spins, it allows us to then atomize the droplets that are coming from the pump and make it a different variable rate wherever you are in the field. This is what's known as precision farming, where spraying chemicals, seeding, fertilization and remote sensing can be carried out in precise detail technology that is routinely used in many areas of China. But now, because the use of drones, robots and AI, one man can do more job than ever. A man can now manage thousands of acres of farmland. So the income of every farmer is increasing very uh, a lot. And then, because of the precision farming uh, technology was introduced to the field, uh, the crop yield is increasing every year and the crop loss due to the uh, equipment um, are getting less and less. Australia, New Zealand and the US also permit drone spraying. The British government said it is examining if pesticide exposure from drones is any different from traditional methods. However, current regulations mean the use of drones is not feasible in the UK and it's a similar picture in Europe. That's a frustration to farmers like Jack Wrangham who began his own drone company for field scouting five years ago from his farm in Northumberland. We developed our scouting software, Skippy Scout, which essentially sends a drone around the field a lot faster than possible on foot, collecting sample photos, which are then analysed, and produces a field report which farmers can use straight away. So it's a much, much faster system than, than previous systems. 
Jack fears European farmers will be left behind in the ag tech race. The restricted legislation is not going to allow us to use all the technology at our disposal as soon as we'd like. It all works and it's all available. We just can't use it yet. And that's going to make it more difficult for farmers to be able to farm in the environmentally sustainable way we need to be. Farming's used to moving slow, but I think now with climate change and everything like that, we need to move faster. So we need to kind of hopefully get everything moving forward faster somehow. But the ag tech race is not just about drones. XAG are not the only robots in town. A Dutch company is continuing its European tour with its robotic tractor, which has been nicknamed Agbot. Looking more transformer than tractor, this diesel electric drive robot can be programmed to autonomously work a field in a predetermined area. Now what we have here is a 156 horsepower unit which has a diesel engine driving a generator and the generator is driving the electromotors for, for the track system. If you take out the human being out of this process <clears throat> then you can design a completely different type of machine. So we are not talking about uh, suspended front axles, we are not talking about cabins, we are not talking about air conditioning systems. All of those stuff is taken out, which makes the machine very simple and also lightweighted, which is good for the soil and which is good for your crop in the end. Dutch company Axeed says the Agbot will be available to buy in Europe by next summer. Now, spectators have to stay well back. They can't get too close because if the robot senses either a human or an object in the field, it will slow down and stop. Say in five years' time, do you think tractors without drivers will just be routine? Yes, I think so. Yeah, for sure. I believe that uh, robots will be a common situation. Right now, these robots are battling for attention and getting plenty of it. All here seem to agree that this is the future of farming.